We're rational agents, right? Where does rational First of all, being true, being a philosophically bent, we have to get our terms sorted out, and we have to agree what we mean by rationality. The proper, so let's go with that. What, what do you throw the, something in something? The proper use of a logic, making appropriate inferences from uh, from data. Right. Like, yeah. Like, rationality, logic, right? That kind so of. So do you think everybody Reason. has that? Do you think everybody is capable of doing that? What down here, as big as corner? Argue, no. no. <laughs> I would say it's quite rare to find people who are quote mm. rational. That but is one the, of the big but, problems. But we have the capability. That's the point. Mm. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where does that, that come mean, from? We're, we're, where does it come from? Yeah. Oh, hard work, education. No, like um, even in the case give you rationality, <laughs> you had a capability first place. I, 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 I think the default human being does, does has its quote own rationality, but it, it's driven by Do you believe we're rational? Sorry. Do you believe we're rational? No. I mean, I mean, if you think what, what you said, I think, we're, we're, we're almost like cold logic reason and that sort of thing. That's definitely not what people are. I'm not How saying, would you survive I'm, in the I'm, world I'm, with I'm, that? I'm not, saying, I'm not saying we're just that, but we're certainly that. We, 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 I mean, have you heard of How this How do you think animals are human beings, apart from, bi uh, from biology? You would say that we're rational, animals are not, right? I don't know. A squirrel hides its nuts and then later on comes and finds that's fairly rational. Isn't that it? Uh, I think animals, animals are fairly rational. They do things in a, according to a, their own logic, which is evolutionary driven. I, I, I They're that. probably not conscious of it. I, I, I think, I think mo are. most, I don't say the vast, vast majority of people are rational in a fairly basic sense. For example, you know, I'm at home. I can see out the window it's raining. Ah, I will need an umbrella, or I need to put on a coat, yeah. or they, they have basically yeah, no. They have a, a bit ability to judge uh, a lie from a uh, from a truth using yeah. common sense, what we call common sense rational criteria. Yeah. I think at that level there's a great deal of rationality around. Otherwise, we couldn't function in a society. We, we, we would be yeah. we, we would be basically making big mistakes and just we not do. being able to function. No, have you not, no, have you not no. But people make an awful lot of no, but people mistakes. don't. No, no, but people no, but we're looking at it in a too elevated way. If you look at it kind of a day-to-day -day level, like walking down Oxford Street, most people will know not to walk on the road such that they are... Have you walked down Oxford no, no. Street? You see, you see we're bring, I know we're bringing human to it, it's funny, but, but more seriously, yeah. people generally know not to walk in front of buses. Why? Because they'll get killed. And this is basic survival, but it's reason. You see, there's a bus coming, yeah. I judge, you know what I mean? Yeah. At that level of, of common right. rationality, that is ubiquitous, apart from yeah. a very few people who are, for medical reasons or other reasons, yeah. are not functioning. But, so I think rationality is universal at a basic level. Like a basic level. Survive, Otherwise, yeah, a, a yeah. silent ask simply yeah. couldn't function. So I think you're right. Yeah. right. But, but, but where I disagree with you, I, I think that rationality is an expression of the soul, and the soul is not reducible to the brain. The brain is... Uh, a filter or medium through which our consciousness expresses itself, but the, the, the mind or the consciousness, the soul, exists separately from our material brain, yeah. uh, and at death or, or at other times, out of body experiences which happen, yeah. this shows that, the, that that dimension is actually the, uh, the, the higher dimension which exists separately from the brain. So, uh, you're, you're a materialist, that's why I yeah, make okay. that point. I'll, I'll put my materialist hat on, because I'll never convince you that otherwise, so whatever I say. It's, always, but I think, there's lots of, I think there's lots of empirical evidence now yeah. to suggest that's and, true, actually, by the way. It's not yeah. just uh, religious okay. prejudice, there's, there's a lot of evidence for that. Right. I, I don't think I've... We've had this conversation a few times, and I think yes. one of the first conversations I had with you, about six or seven years <laughs> He's ago... He's rebuking me now. I've told you before, and, and you, you didn't pay any attention. the same flippant evidence as you. Anyway, never mind. Uh, we'll just go round and round in circles. But it's well, you do. Fun. You go round in circles, yes. So, uh, no, but no, seriously. There is actually a massive um, uh, scientific <laughs> empirical observation where, where people, for example, there's a fascinating cases, and there are many cases, so he's going to groan, or people have near... I near to research it after you told me. The, the people, really well, no, no, I, 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 can, I can quote to you the peer-reviewed academic the research. I, I can send you the links. I've read it now do. in reputable universities in the States. For example, the one, one thing I find very impressive, if people have so-called near-death experiences or even out-of-body experiences in very extreme conditions, um, who feel that they're, so they're unconscious, they're in a very, very extreme state, that, they're, that they're, their faculties have collapsed or whatever, they're not mm. technically dead, but they're certainly not uh, uh, conscious and looking and observing around. And they have out-of-body experiences or near-death experiences, and they, they t typically come out of the body and observe what's going on uh, on the ground beneath them. They can see what's going on, they can see and hear, observe, and accurately report. Once they're revived, 
they are able to accurately report what they have seen and heard to a doctor, a nurse, an onlooker. So that, that, that's commonplace. That's very well researched and observed. But there are cases, and this is my point, not what I've just said, this is my point, where people who have been born blind, who have never seen in their lives, have a near-death experience and observe what's happening around them. They see what's happened uh, in detail. Uh, they're revived and they're blind again because they're blind. Uh, and what they have described has been corroborated as completely accurate. Uh, now, the doctors and nurses and others who have received this testimony, you know, you know, Joe Bloggs, who's blind, saw what was going on. When asked, you know, did this person accurately describe what happened, they'll say, yes, they did, but we don't have an explanation for it. They're not offering metaphysical explanations. So I, I actually looked into this, like you say you did, and there is actually academic research, University of Minnesota, by uh, peer-reviewed academic articles by uh, medical practitioners who examined this and looked at all the possible explanations for this phenomenon. People born blind in near-death experiences being able to observe accurately what is going on around them, whilst they're virtually dead, by the way, on this lab, and blind, and not that that would make a difference, I mean, anyway, they're virtually dead anyway. And, 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 I'll go with the evidence. No, and you got my let, let, me, let, me tell you what, let me tell you the research. They looked through all, all the possibility of fraud, of this and that, and they came to the conclusion, you read that very long article, and it's very boring, and I read all the way through it, all the case studies, and all the numbers of people, and different research, and they interviewed people who've had the blah, 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 and they came to the conclusion that these phenomena are actually real. That they're not just gossip and hearsay, that there actually are people who are born blind, who saw what was going on, and their reported observations were corroborated as completely accurate. Now, when I say, therefore, that the materialist explanation of the brain is, is unscientific now, it can't stand up to the empirical evidence, there is good peer-reviewed evidence to suggest that conclusion. Yeah, uh, well, if there is, then... Yeah, I'll go with it. I'll, I'll email you the research. I'll, I'll email you. I'll, I'll email it to you if you want. Seriously, I'll email it to you. All my, what? My, my three cheers for empirical evidence. Yeah. Uh, but but I, 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 <laughs> I'm sure I, I've never asked you the, you know, the key question about this, which has always been raised. Right. For some reason, I forgot to answer, ask you. But if you're positing that, that, that there is a my, my apologies. Yeah. Dualism. Yeah. Dualism. Dualism. So you're talking, Kind of no, I, I'm not talking about. Well, are you saying my position oh, is I know. dualism? You, everything's mine, doesn't it? Okay. I'm an idealist. Yeah, sorry. I'm not a yeah. dualist. Yeah, we have talked about this. <laughs> Checkmate. He's saying I'm a, 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 a dualist in the sense that. of René Descartes, a, yeah. a Cartesian dualist. I'm not. However, I, I'm an idealist in the sense of Berkeley. Yeah. Actually, in the sense of the Quran, yeah. but we won't go there. I'll um, kick, and I'll kick your shin, and therefore, <laughs> if you. I have a question for you, though. How do you explain rationality? How do what? Because if you're a materialist. You I thought you said, how do you spell it? No, no, yeah, how do, how do you spell it? <laughs> I have no idea. Let's get to the, from my understanding, yeah. from a materialistic, physical, physicalistic point of view, Rationality, as we know it, is inexplicable. Because according to your, and I'm assuming that you're, you're going to be a naturalist and we we'll assume that you believe in Darwinian evolution, we should have instinct, we should have reason. Ooh. Because all that stuff when we do mathematics and quantum mechanics and poetry, that's yeah. yeah, no, requirement. No, no, good that's, point. That's, that's, that's no, what I'm All we should have known is to count three saber tooth tigers like Max. Yeah. No, and no. that's kind of all we need. <laughs> but you're saying we can yeah. do quantum mechanics. Yeah. I mean, yeah. whoa, this yeah. is way, way, way I, beyond I, what I we need. That's, that's a, a fair point. <laughs> It's an absolutely fair point, and it needs to be addressed. Yeah. Indeed, that's why we're asking you. I think C.S. Lewis made put Sorry? this, didn't he? So, You're quoting a Christian apologist? I'm not saying that. Well, Gosh, I'm impressed. For an atheist, that's not bad. Keep going. You know, based on the fact that we are constructed to deal with a world of saber-toothed tigers, well, how do you get from that to... Quantum, quantum mechanics. Fine. <laughs> or mathematical physics. I, I think my response to that mm. is that... Um, there is something here which, which is much talked about but probably not very deeply understood, which is hierarchies of emergence. I love doing that. Emergent properties. <laughs> hierarchies of emergence. This so is supposed to words, explain things, words, by the way. In other words, I think one of, one of the... That's a little bit of magic. It is. Every time I do that, it, this, it's a bit Jordan a bit. This, is, this, is, this, is, this is materialist magic, by the way. If he does that, you think, ooh, it's magic. What it is, it doesn't explain it's, anything. It's to distract you from the fact I'm talking nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's so, he's so, I'm this is what I like, Andy. He's so sweet sometimes. <laughs> yeah. you, you don't have to destroy his arguments, he just destroys his own arguments. He's, a, he's one of those self refuting atheists, you know. <laughs> 
My favourite kind. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a sort of jujitsu of arguing. You see, I don't yeah, yeah. in a comfort zone. Like, bang. <laughs> Except the bang never comes. Do you, do, do, do you feel that earlier civilizations, say, for example, near the Ice Age, 12,000, 13,000 years ago, would you, would you, do you, do you think we have a differing in intelligence or IQ? Not, oh, well, oh, that's a good one. I don't think intelligence. <laughs> I, I think if you go back. I mean, I, I, okay, I know a little bit about the sort of evolution of mankind according to the standard theory. I'm not going to sort of tread on anybody. Standard case. theory. I, I, I like that. Western but, but materialism, you give me. You, 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 you yeah, universalising it for the whole world. Point, yeah. Probably about yeah. 70,000, 80,000 years ago, where you could see in the old That's when he was record. born, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's a, there's, a, there's a guy called uh, Mithen, Mithen, something like that, who wrote this fantastic book, and it, he, he put this idea that. that Prior to about some crucial point about 70, 80,000 years ago, the, the hominids, who, who probably were early Homo sapiens and Homo erectus and Neanderthals, essentially have very compartmentalised brains. Now, that, that's a bit difficult. How the hell do you have a compartmentalised brain? Well, my, my analogy is, for example, anybody who drives knows this, or anybody who can do some task whilst doing something else. Now, you know, I, I can drive and have a conversation like this, but I'll deal with all the problems coming along, but with, with, subconsciously. Multitasking. Sorry? Multitasking. Yeah, it, you could, you it, could it's say, what women do well and men do not so well. These things yeah. that doing. And we all do this kind of thing. Now, now the, the theory is that early hominids actually have quite compartmentalised brains. So, so they have something for uh, hunting, something for tool making, uh, a bit for language and a bit for social interaction. They didn't really meet. And there was some something, it might have been some genetic switch or something about this here when you start, start seeing art. Oh, art is a big thing. Oh, so the magic thing there, the genetic switch like that. Uh, uh, suddenly, the, 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 the magic happens. So there's a sudden yeah, yeah. blossoming. So, yeah, sudden so, blossoming. And also wearing clothes that are decorative rather than really <clears throat> functional. So you find skeletons, uh, you know, around this period where suddenly you get beads, people covered in beads and ochre and that sort of thing. So they're using symbolic representation. So you get this sort of merging of functional clothing with the social interaction. They're sending messages to people through their clothing. You read tapings, so, didn't you? Sorry? You read tapings, didn't you? The book is Thomas that in Aikens. there? Yeah, it probably you know, is. It's an no, idea. That's exactly what you're saying. They're yeah, saying yeah. that. So, so we, that's, so hang anyway, on. So he's ripping off is, some other book, is he? Like okay. About uh, that amount of time. Uh, uh, I haven't read that book yet. Actually, and is, of course, is it worth the, reading? The other question is a lot the first of our hocus pocus. The second part gets social integration. Towns. It's very useful. It tells our sociology and stuff like that. So the beginning is hocus pocus. I thought it might be. I thought it might. Yeah, I don't know if you can. And the other metric is brain size. Well, actually. Our brain sizes are shrinking, believe it or not, for the last few thousand years. They're, they're shrinking. That might be because we're developing a sort of cultural consciousness, so we, we, we can store away information in, in books and libraries. We don't need to memorise the uh, same amount of stuff. So we, we're kind of at a disadvantage compared with some uh, Stone Age ancestors. You might say there was a peak of personal intelligence that might have been hit about 30 or 40,000 years ago, where people were multi they could do an awful lot of different things. You know, you had to. Cause you I agree. Uh, you're right. There's, there's a lot of assumptions going on here. There's a paradigm operating here to explain everything in, in certain understandings, and, I, and I, I, ch I, I disagree with that. I think there's evidence now suggests there's a very different paradigm than required. Um, it's hard to believe that we are more Paul's status stone man cave narrative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, the I mean, thing is, if you spend too long as big as corner, you can come away with theories like that. But yeah. 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 They yeah. never give yeah. evidence yeah. to literary science. They all give a narrative about it. It's just those stories. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. Just so. Just those stories. So all, so In accordance with certain uh, 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 presuppositions about how it must have happened, because we believe this about the world, therefore here is my just those stories. There's an awful lot of assumptions going on in there, and that's my criticism of it. Um, and he talks about the standard narrative, but it's actually the standard Western narrative. Yeah. <laughs> what he observed was that individually, these people were smarter than He told you that, some scientists. They lived in a hostile environment, they had to be. Whereas That's why I know some philosophy of science is really helpful because you just don't take a lot of this uh, as a neutral objective. It's actually question the assumptions that are underpinning this particular methodology, and they should people should always state scientists should always state their their assumptions before they be, be, before they say something. Well, my assumption is the universe is purely material, uh, that there's no other dimensions, and uh, that the transcendent realm and faith. 
doesn't exist, and therefore everything I'm now going to say will go through that matrix. That is my assumption. Now I will give you my argument and my evidence and my science. You basically framed it. You, you got it. That, that for me is good science because you've been honest about your assumptions. But a lot of science doesn't do that. Uh, it, it, it just jumps in and then he regurgitates it, saying, "Well, the standard narrative." Well, no, hang on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's step back here. What are the assumptions that are framing this whole discussion? And, and this is not some kind of wacky idea. I mean, with the advent of quantum mechanics now, we know that the observer uh, ha has a significant uh, uh, influence on the the outcome of any experiments. You know, we're no longer just abstracted from the realities. We affect the outcome of the experiments we're doing. And that's been demonstrated numerous times in quantum mechanics. So we're inextricably connected to the science that we do as beings themselves. And, uh, anyway, so... <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but that great, exactly right, exactly right. So that's why I really... Knowing some philosophy of science is really important if we're to grapple with these. Otherwise, we're just going to be victims to whatever uh, presuppositions are being fed into what we're being presented as neutral or kind of value-free, and it's often not. There is, there is certainly at one point where you just put your hands up and say, but a lot of best. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I learned this by uh, someone I know who's doing his PhD in physics at Oxford. I, I interviewed him on my channel. Brilliant guy. I hope he's going to come on again. And he says now, if you're, he's doing his PhD in physics at Oxford. Okay. Uh, Whenever you do a paper, you have to, and I'm just repeating what he said, to be honest, you have to state what your assumptions are. You just don't jump in there. You have to say, right, I'm coming at it from this certain, these are, these are, I'm assuming this model of the universe or this model of physics, and using that, I'm now going to uh, uh, talk about physics. And unless you do that, your paper's not accepted at Oxford. So I think that's brilliant science. So you're not, you're not just kind of pulse, uh, pulling a fast one on something. Just accept what I say, you know. No, 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 this is my model. So, but there are other other models. There are other models, yes. not just that one. That, that's the the, the implicit Power. point Maybe that's there. Maybe science is fallible as well because there's not a consistency in how to read mm. scientific research that people go through. Yeah. If you set the intention from the beginning, and everyone were to do that, at least then it gives context to every study. Yeah. I think what science really does is it eliminates narratives. All it tells you is what is not true. Science never told you what is true. Welcome, sir. How are you? Really good to see you again. We met before. I'll go through. He's got through. All science can do is say Paul Sir is incorrect. This guy comes up. And it approves articles. It's very rigid. It's eliminated. It's like it gets rid of what does not fit the data. Yeah. But you can have multiple narratives, like you're saying. You can have multiple models explaining the same data. And it's just as good. Exactly. Yeah. And it's just as good as each other. Yeah. I don't think we should let him get away too much. I, 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 he's a lovely guy, I love him to bits, but I've discussed this with him a thousand times before, for about five years. So I, I, I'm, I, I'm only kind of talking to him because, because you maybe have not met him, but he's a great guy. Yeah, uh, he's a good guy. He's but good he, but, but we, we've debated this but for years. But he's already admitted to two contradictions in terms of materialism. It's, One, not, it's not difficult to run rings about him, bless him. But I mean, he's a, he's a very intelligent guy. Uh, uh, I, I just don't think he has a reason to be a materialist. Like based on what he said earlier about uh, that phenomenon. You see, whatever, whatever he says, I just bring up the philosophy, basically, and saying, well, you're coming at it from this paradigm. And yeah. at that point, the whole thing starts to break down because he is. Yeah. And I'm saying, well, I have this paradigm and it explains yeah. these, these range of facts that your paradigm can't explain. Yeah. And at that point, we kind of ground to a halt because... We're just we're just talking we're just talking about you behind your back. We're just talking about you behind your back. I'm just saying we've discussed these things many times over the years before and, so and how we had different paradigms and yeah. I'll just say to Paul, I don't think you have the reason to be a materialist. Sorry? Like, you're obviously a very intelligent person. Oh thank you. Yeah, you, you've been having conversations with this guy for many years and you know for example you know how you should bring up to atheists? How do you explain you can't explain rationality? That's the argument you usually you know, you're, you're a functional atheist. atheist. But you see, I'm giving everybody at the point. This so you, you know, no, no reference to transcendent in anything you've ever said. I think there is. Oh, I missed it then. Would you care to remind me what I missed? So you come down this or what do you mean by transcendent? <laughs> uh, no, for, no, that's, a, for, no, that's an absolutely good, valid question. It's the sort of thing that John Peterson yeah. would say. What do you mean by we and yeah, and, like and but and, and I? Yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, no, oh, sorry, it's it's boring. it sounds boring. No, no, it's a valid... You have to, you have to sort of pin the... No, because these are okay. uh, arm-waving words. And, and you can easily end up having different conversations okay. because you have different understandings what, what, what of the I mean, What I mean by, by uh, that then, uh, transcendent, is a non material explanation that in, involve, for example, uh, spiritual explanations or divine yeah. explanations yeah. or and anything that's not just imminent cause and effect. Right. Uh, no, I, I think, honestly, I, I think that the, the, the materialist reductionist account of human consciousness is lacking. Mm. 
And I, I, I'm convinced by that. For example, there's um, oh dear, there's a, there's a couple of philosophers around who who, who are not um, like you, you know, quotes religious or you know whatever you want to call yourself thinkers <laughs> or dualists. I know you're not a dualist. A dualist. Right. A dualist. They, they, I mean, um, shit, I forgot his name. Um, Who do you have in mind? But but anyway. they make strong arguments. There's two of them, and if I prepared myself, I would have the names. Well, next time, please. Raymond please. Tallis. Raymond right, Tallis. Okay. Do you know him? Uh, not personally. I think he might be interested, but, but he, mm. he is a self avowed atheist. Right. He can't. I mean, his argument is the presence of evil, and you could no doubt have good God. Actually. Well, the presence of evil proves the existence of God, by the way. Yeah. Actually, yeah. This one of the strongest arguments the existence of God is the existence Paul, of evil. Yeah. Paul, it's seriously. <laughs> seriously, this man is a. Is a a deep and serious thinker. I don't doubt that. I'm, I'm just saying the, the irony is. Yourself on your show, if you want to debate. Okay. Or if you don't want. No, no, I don't, I don't do debates on my show. Uh, uh, my... <laughs> but the point is that, that yeah. he has written several books, and, and, and the general gist is that he argues that the, the reductionist account of consciousness cannot work. No. Right. So, but he, he's not so saying, here's, he's not saying here's the answer. So therefore, materialism is Well, forth. he's not saying that here's the answer. He, he's saying that here's the problem. And he's not great enough to give what the answer is. But he, 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 do, he does say that he will, uh, you know, afterthought, he does reject the notion of, of a mind-driven or spiritual-driven world. Why? Well, as I say, I mean, I, I think his argument against the existence of God is... What, 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 what is this? Yeah, but the evil proves the existence of God. No, I'm not going to defend his position. No, but I, I mean, well, it, 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 his... the, the language of evil yeah. it, uh, it, it, it suggests a metaphysical well, realm where there is good yeah. and evil. Yeah. Uh, it's not yeah. a materialist explanation at all, and that fits in perfectly with a theistic yeah. or religious understanding. Yeah. It does not fit in. You can't have a moral evil in an atheist universe because there's no meaning. There's there's no transcendent reference. There is nothing. It's just brute oh, brute material yeah. facts. Yeah. So this yeah. language fits very perfectly in a yeah. religious understanding. Yeah. If you're going to talk about evil uh, that actually leads to God not so the other way around right. cold blind pitiless universe that's Thomas Hobbes <laughs> oh, uh, oh life is no, nasty no, brutish no, and short I know that one too it's quite a few people okay. around okay. speakers corner who are nasty brutish and short yes <laughs> yes <laughs> now, Richard and that's just us said, well, when it asked the problem of evil he said this universe is full of blind pitiless indifferent yeah. so on so forth yes Basically, without meaning something. but but then he complains about I don't believe in God because of the problem because of evil hang on, hang on. you can't talk about a meaningless universe yeah. and then complain about evil well, no, because evil point. is yeah, a significant moral yeah. objective reality yeah, and he's yeah. saying that's the reason I don't believe it doesn't make any sense yeah, yeah. you can't have your your religious cake and eat it yeah, yeah. you, so, you just so, can't do it so Yes. My, 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 I suppose my position, you know, wavers between agnostic and atheist, so... I, oh, so there we go, he's agnostic, really. Agnostic Christian. No, sweet. He's, 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 he's moved, he's moved a little bit towards agnosticism. I'm going to... I'm, 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 I'm going to argue strongly for religious practice and beliefs. I, I think no society can function properly without it. We see under communism... But this is, not Pla this is pure Plato, isn't it? Plato's this is the noble lie. The noble lie in Plato's <laughs> Republic. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. This is, we mustn't talk about it. So he's going to say, <laughs> religion is great. It, it might be completely false, yeah, yeah. but it's great because it's useful to keep people. It's, Paul, it's, a, lie. it's a lie. No, you said it's a lie. You said it's a lie. I wouldn't, you say it's I wouldn't pragmatic. go there because I'm being agnostic. I say, it's, but the point is... But it's utility, here, here social here utility. Here are these claims about metaphysics, which, being metaphysics, we can never resolve. Literally... I was saying earlier to somebody... We said we can't resolve first, them. What, what, what claims and why corner, can't we resolve them? When I first them? arrived at Speaker's Corner, <laughs> I, I was gobsmacked because I thought the conversations that we were having between Christians, Muslims and Jews and so on, you could have had a time machine and go back to Baghdad in yes. the square in 850 yes. and you'd hear exactly the same arguments. It's very true. So, it's very have, true. Have it's we very progressed? True. Is, is philosophy and theology... Yes, we have because the Muslim world, there are two billion Muslims on the planet. So, all right, yeah. all right. <laughs> Your metric is numbers. Right. We're getting there, you say. But what I'm saying is... Intellectually progress, have we? No, no. no I say no. I agree, Just bracket that, put it to one side. Everybody has their own opinion about the metaphysics mm. of it. And I think the, the problem is that the reason why we haven't, quote, progressed and we never will is that these questions are fundamentally unanswerable. Why is he not except, a believer? Except at an individual level. You, if you, you don't believe, it. you don't yeah. believe. I do not have the, the, what did they call it, the census. You know, uh, 
divinitatis. I don't have. Divinus. Literally. Divinus. It, it, yeah, yeah, I can't yeah. remember who said that. But it, like, like we have a sense of Thomas sight, Aquinas. Hearing, so you're quoting Catholic sort of theologians to oh, back up your <laughs> to, to back up your agnosticism, <laughs> you're, you're, which is very ironic. Um, given you're, you're doing a bit of. I don't, it's not quite ad hominem, but it is sort of saying no, no, my is, arguments are weak because I'm quoting. It, it is ad hominem. Uh, <laughs> to disagree with? No. Yeah. Well, no. Andy, I'm, I'm a. But the thing is, you make take my, ideas from everywhere. And Andy, shouldn't we do that? Andy, see the thing is, you're making my argument for me because usually I say this to atheist people. I'm not. I'm not no, in a no, I'm not an argument for you. I'm you are. having a discussion. Why? Well, I'm so. This is Speaker's Corner. Oh, sorry. We can have an argument in the in the discussion, right? Yeah. But the point I'm making is this a five minute argument or the full half hour? I make as short as I can. Five years maybe. That's a Monty It's a Monty Python. Reference? You didn't get it. No, no, no it had to be of a certain right, age, okay. I suppose. Again, yeah. it's a Monty Python. There's a sketch there. Where the guy comes in. You know, do you want to explain the the, the scene, the Monty Python scene? It, it's a little bit of parody. I don't know what it's a parody. But, I mean, Monty Python. Was, have you, do you know what we're talking about? Monty no Python? idea. No. Ah. I was born. Ah. I was born in Look it up on YouTube. So a lot of the yeah, I know. Th this guy's from Germany. Yeah, so. Well, not a lot of They had so no humour at all. No humour at all. You're doubly deficient. So okay. obviously, oh, actually, no. Look, look at the Monty Python German sketch. Mm. Oh, no, it's yeah. okay. Right. <laughs> All right, so moving on quickly. Anyway, moving on quickly. Mm -hmm. so yeah. Yeah. Still, well, I think it's you're making argument for me. Usually, I speak to atheist people. I'm not saying you're them, but usually, the argument they make is we're progressists. We're getting better every day. We're learning new things. Oh, we're God, coming no. more moral, no. this and all that. We, we and just said we're getting better. Yeah, we're on our side discussion. We've, but, we've made an agreement. But, but, but my argument with you are making right now is the human condition, the metaphysical questions have not changed. We was in Baghdad those no, days, no, right? No, 800. No, no. So that shows that all of us are subject to the same questioning, to the same test. You see what I'm saying? So Wait, the, what you're saying what is actually very... From that, yeah. Mate, like, like, you're saying you don't mind, mm. but like... You're saying the opposite of an atheist person. You're well, you were pointing me as an atheist. I mean, I'm not. I'm, okay, I keep so you're saying not atheist, to, so to you're I get blue in the face. I'm, I don't uh, consider myself an atheist. <laughs> no, but I consider you an atheist. Yeah, no, Whatever you consider. Quoting from Paul, I think he's an atheist. He's <laughs> not an expert. I just no, have I'm to not. take his word that I'm an He's atheist. a functional atheist because all his arguments are material. I mean, they never okay, rise above materialism. So it's like an atheist functionality. What are you looking for? Pragmatism or are you looking for truth? Um. Oh, okay. Truth is a bit of a problem. Is that true for the capital T? Yeah, objective truth. Right. Well, oh, well that is a problem. But is it true that two See, and two? They're, they're, is it true? <laughs> is analytical truth always true? Is it always true? Oh, yes. That two, oh, well, there you uh, go. There we go. A married man. No, it's just true. Is, is it true that two and two always equals four? All, the, oh, all, ooh, unmar all, are unma all unmarried the men are always bachelors, uh, for example. Is this they're, always they're true? Things. So, so the analytical truth yep. would say mathematical um, truths. All bachelors are unmarried. Yep. Yeah. You, you, you can't get around. Of course they are, because that's you know the, the two terms of the expression. Yeah. Refer to they're just different ways of saying the same thing. Okay. But um, you know, if you say so and so is unmarried, oh, that's a synthetic truth. You have to go and ask them and look at the documents. Observe it. Yeah. It's empirical. Mathematical truths are rather interesting. Mm, I know. They're, not, they're neither one talk. But they're, but they're a priori truths. Uh, that according. Oh, I, I assert they are because they are independent of our experience, and but no. they're always true regardless of. Uh, right. The time of day, or how we feel, it, it's always, it's okay. always. Give, give me another example. It's always the case that a triangle is, has three sides, yeah. regardless of how, how you pull a triangle. To find us. Yeah, but this is an a priori truth. Yeah, it's independent. The triangle is, that's, that is yeah. an analytical, analytical. Uh, not synthetic. No, and, it's and analytical. Analytical truth. Yeah. But there are synthetic. You don't go around looking at all triangles. Exactly. Check they have three sides. So there are lots of things that are always necessarily okay. true. However, is it necessarily true? Uh, independent of our experience and our opinions, and this, you, you can say there's no truth, and they, these things are truths. And if you go along with, concept. if you go along with Kant, concept. of course, Kant believed there were synthetic a priori truths, <laughs> the things that were truths of the world, Ooh. but in soon, <laughs> we've got the K word. Like, no, like for example, uh, <laughs> yeah, causality, yeah, yeah, space, yeah. time. So we come into the world with these categories of perception. These co cognitive faculties right. that and help. And yeah. Interestingly, that is actually supported by research into infants. Yes. They do come into the world with categories of yes. perception. Uh, and, and if yes. Kant had only watched a baby, you know. And, and well, how do you know he didn't watch a baby? Well, because <laughs> he didn't. They were blokes. They were unmarried blokes who, who just spent the time drinking. And how, how many Prussian men do you know from the 18th century? <laughs> Out of interest. <laughs> What kind of <laughs> argument is this? No, I mean, so you, you, <laughs> you, you, you say you, I don't know any 18th century. No, but you're saying that. I think, from what yeah. I know of Kant, I don't think you've never ever, ever met any. Guy I'm pretty confident that you've never met any guys in the 18th century, <laughs> from Prussia or anywhere else. Actually, I Have don't you? think you've met. A, uh, no, but I've, I've read a few of them, and uh, Kant, Kant, Kant is, is one of them. I think. And that's a priori truth. 
but what, but, but what he's saying is, is very is leads on to Islam very interesting because the fitra the fitra which is the inherent human nature we have fits in with this is not just our cognitive faculties it's our intuition about morality and justice and the existence of a creator independent of us uh, all this is hardwired into our species and this is not just theology this has been validated by a researcher at Oxford uh, a few years ago which showed that the religious instinct is inherent in our species and it's universal whether you go to secular Japan or you go to Britain or you go anywhere babies instinctively know that there is a divine uh, realm uh, and bec because the Oxford research has looked into this uh, I'll send you the link I've done a, I've done a, I've done a YouTube video about it I've actually done a program about it uh, well this is academic research has been peer-reviewed and it's been it was it was uh, cross-cultural doesn't matter if it's a secular religious society yeah so the point is th this fits in with the, the this comes in this fits in with the the Quranic understanding which talks about the fitra uh, very naturally and this has been validated by the most recent science so we as a species naturally believe in God we naturally believe in right and wrong we actually believe in truth and uh, this is part of who we are so being an atheist is a lot of effort because you have to deny your human condition then well there's a natural instinct to believe in God and to worship him and this is the tragedy of atheism well, it goes against our natural order there's a few jumps going on there because you know in, in three clauses you get from recognizing the existence of a transcendent being bigger than us but it's, it's a common to worshiping him, it, him. Or it, or well, uh, yeah, I say that is a joke. That that is the the oh, inference that because we, do, now, do, you we don't make, necessarily you could be a deist and say, okay, I'm quite satisfied that you can't account for the existence of order and, and in the universe and its mere existence without some sort of external to it transcendence. Well, this was agent. A now that doesn't lead at all to, to any anything that lays down moral law that is interested in us. Or, or I think the, mo the moral law is within us to some extent. Oh, well. If you but babies seem to be acutely aware of injustice. Yeah, yeah. If you if you take its rattle and give it to someone else, it's going to say, it's not fair. Uh, so and it's not because they've been schooled into that. They have an instinctive sense of right yeah. and wrong. Uh, and so they, this human species. No, they may well do. You see, fair, the, the appreciation of fairness with which yeah. Yeah. for example. Yeah. They, they will see when they've been. Out of yeah. a, but but then maybe that, 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 that may or may explain it. Yeah. Well, that, that, okay, I, I'll give you a a just so story. Just so story. Your just so story. Touche. Touche. You can't point to actual, you know, hard empirical evidence. But I have. I, I, okay. I mentioned a whole bunch of peer-reviewed articles, and I can send you the links for. But you're, I can you're, show you're, you a peer-reviewed, peer-reviewed article that debunks the whole notion of peer review. It's nonsense. The nature of a lot of... I mean, I mean, this is something that's been... Sorry, a, sorry, a, a, yeah, do, do, hang on, do you realise what I you've like just it. said? <laughs> he can show me a peer-reviewed article <laughs> to refute <laughs> a peer-reviewed article <laughs> idea. Do you realise what you've just said? <laughs> do you, you realise I've just... You come out with a nonsense <laughs> statement. Yeah, I did it deliberately. <laughs> okay. I was teasing you. Okay. <laughs> I fell for it. <laughs> Right, so you agree. <laughs> you were so, so, anyway. you, so you agree that, like Paul's laying around now, there are natural conditions human beings have, right? We have innate ideas like Kant was saying. Yeah. You agree? Yeah, yeah. We do. Why? Well, that, that you is peer reviewed, definitely. Okay, so why? why? And evolution, by the way, cannot produce this. Exactly. It, 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 how, 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 how could Darwin mean, evolution yeah. produce this, these you, sophisticated you say, faculties? Yeah. Because what's this got to do with survival in the world? Yeah. It has not, yeah. nothing to do with yeah. it at all. Yeah. These are highly sophisticated yeah. uh, uh, technologies of the mind that we have, so, so, which suggests a much rather right. different etiology than his one. If, if we unwind a bit, about 20 minutes, because that, that was coming up, that, that I was trying to give you my um, just so story. appreciation. Okay. Oh, stop it. <laughs> my just so story. <laughs> it is, it is literally. And I, I, I think it's something I've absorbed from various readings that I've done. But the, answering your question, where does rationality... Come? And I, hmm. I said earlier that I don't think norm, the normal state of big, apart from not walking into a hole, not walking into a bus, that's, it's kind of not even rationality, it's just basic survival instinct. So let's discount wait, that. Wait, 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 but, but, but the no, thing about that, yeah, basic think... survival instinct. Sorry? This phone here, basic survival instinct. What? No rationality, what? just basic survival instinct got us to iPhones. 
Can I, can I make a point? Well, it, it depends if it's Apple or not. I mean, if that's, uh, I mean, I mean, well, well, who made that particular yeah, yeah, thing? I mean, is it when, uh, when ports were survival? Because if it's an iPhone, I would agree with you. When, 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 the, when the smartphone comes out in the hands of a, uh, not a, a god smart person, <laughs> it's what? almost like the H word. What's a god bother? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going to have the argument to design again, aren't we? Yeah, it's a good argument okay. from design, by the way. It's a very I mean, powerful I, argument. I, I, I wish you'd bring out a stopwatch well, or well, something. I really you. you know, according to Paley. You know, Please continue. Before I really Paley was right, you. by the way. The design in the universe. Well, that's another argument. Have you, have you looked at DNA recently? I mean, DNA is incredibly sophisticated. Where do, this wow, is, uh, therefore God. Therefore, that's, in design. The no, no. Therefore, no, okay. design. Well, and therefore, a designer. Is, therefore... This is extraordinary. Therefore, God. No, the no. Argument. No, the argument is design, designer. That's the argument. It's not, it's not difficult. Okay. Design... No, designer. Design to this. <laughs> you, you've made an assumption that design. If you came across this in a field, would you, would you, would you, would you say that's designed or not, out of interest? No, I don't come across, no we're talking about, uh, you know, an animal, a snail, a blade of grass, or something. DNA is much more sophisticated than my iPhone. Therefore, it is obvious. It is obvious that a highly sophisticated, elaborate, uh, engineered system has a engineer. It's not difficult. Well, which you, you could. Oh, I see. You, you, you must. Anyway, that, that's, see, that's, look, that's, another, that's another argument. Oh, anyway. This doesn't aid our survival. Huh? This doesn't aid our survival. I was taking a dig at him. No, exchanging numbers. <laughs> anyway. Um, no, I, I wanted to address this this Please question. Yes. About. What question? I, I think it's an important Rationality. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so we, 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 we're mm. given a basic Do sort of. We have, by, that you could, you, perhaps you could agree that evolution would it's give, give us the basic ability to survive in the real world. So that's, um, you know, running away from saber-toothed tigers, not walking in front of buses, basic survival. But, that, but the argument from, you know, C.S. Lewis and others is that, well, that's not rationality. That's not the ability to make these huge steps in understanding the universe in, in considerable. Where on earth? Why would evolution give us the ability to understand gravity or electromagnetic or, or mathematical physics? How? How the hell does that happen? Well, that's a very interesting question. Yes. I say it doesn't. Basic evolution doesn't. So that's what I was talking about earlier when we digressed onto something. The, the sort of hierarchy of, of emergence. Emergent so, property. Yeah, something like that. But, but you, you, you get... And the key thing about humans, when you think about it, which differentiates us from almost all other species, yeah. is our ability to form communities with language. Language is something that does emerge. Yeah. All right, other species can communicate with barks and howls and that sort of thing, that's not really language. So, so language, out of nowhere almost, and if you like, this is a mystery, this is a transcendent mystery that's granted to us by God. We actually have th this ability to grasp the past, the present and the future in concepts and manipulate those concepts. Right, so that's the big thing. And communicate them with, with other people. So that opens up a whole new arena of conceptual thought, which is kind of removed from the, the drivers of basic survival evolution. Now you're onto a different level, and you can see how humans have transcended that basic evolution. And we're into this very scary world of creating the world out for ourselves. I know your storyline. You're doing it in. You're, che you're cheating. Yeah. Oh, that's a bit bold. That's a very uh, strong uh, well, allegation, sir. What do you speak to? Say? So yeah. I, tell, I tell you why I say it's cheating, right? When you speak to, because who was it? John Peter the Knight. You know, atheists always like to have a bit of spirituality on the side. They always like to have a little bit of magic, <laughs> a little bit, you know? Just give them one miracle, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you're saying is, the same thing most people say about half of consciousness. It's an emergent property. For example, there's no such society, but when I come together, when you come together, we have this new property called society, right? Mm. And it comes together as people come together. This is usually the argument for emergent properties. But you haven't explained it. You're saying that's what happened, but it's sort of, sort of, and, I, and, and I could say that's, that's fallacious reasoning. Yeah. It's a categorical uh, 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 fallacy to believe that. Yeah. To say he's, stick, he's stuck in a red block, eventually, at infinitum, we're going to get a blue block. That's what I'm basically saying. Mm. When you say emergent property, it's, like, it's, it's just the genie in a bottle. Mm. You rub it, and it just happened. Like God and we did don't it. know how it happened, but we know so what like, happened. That's what he's yeah. basically saying. It's very much like so, God did it. No, you don't think it's only a damn thing. God, 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 God is introducing this concept of God. Oh, good to see you, mate. There's nothing about the mechanism. 
Inshallah. Take care. What's his internal mechanism? Oh, it's all mysterious. We can't go there. Fair play, you got me there. I cannot explain how God brought it about. But God is a bottom out, and there's a there's a point where sorry, Paul, bottom me out. There's a point where. He's apologising to me for that. Anyway, view of the world, you reach bottom. <laughs> and that's it. You know, there's an act of faith involved, if you like. Yeah, yeah we go ahead with it. I love yeah, it. I, yeah, I love it, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's your religion yeah. then. Yeah. yeah. If you like. An act yeah. of faith. Yeah. 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 Well. Yeah. I mean, I mean, so, so honest, this I is like the you. best one can like do. You, this is the best I can do as a, as a partially educated Englishman of 2022 in under, comprehending Partially the educated Englishman. Sound that comes to Oxford. Well, and... and <laughs> And I, 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 I tend to think that how, however much we strive, however much humanity <coughs> strives, and hopefully we'll carry on doing it for billions of years, then there'll be some point where we, we just have to accept that, that, that that's it. We'll never have a complete explanation of everything. If we do, then we will be the gods, which is probably blasphemous. Yes. But every, every belief system bottoms out or, or has to say some, something like there's a term which you will not go any further. God or emergence or... So let me pick up on that. I agree with you. It comes down to an article of faith, right? I took the leap of faith and saying, God, right? This all makes sense. God explains it. Yeah. You're taking a leap of faith saying, materialism, I don't know, right? What do you benefit out of it? I get afterlife out of it. Oh, no, I'm, what do you, what do you, what do you, wait a minute. Listen to what I was saying. Well, all the way around. Oh, <laughs> I mean, again, you know. In show, yeah, thank you. Bye bye, Slam. So, what? So, 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 what I said earlier is, is that I, I will defend religion, the practice of religion. I, I, that, you know. But it's for its utilitarian functionality rather than uh, you benefit. But rather than for the fact. No, you want me to believe no, no, hello, let, me, let, me, let me finish. Rather than, it, rather than it is true, and it, it's not a compliment to religion to say, well, we like your, your utility. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, too, mate. Fair enough. Thank you, Fair enough. Right. Uh, well, you want to make a cold? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm okay. sorry, that's your problem if you don't feel complimented. No, no, I'm saying, if you think you're, if you're, think you're talking to religious believers and saying, well, we value your religion, but actually it's complete lies, but therefore, well, I really, you know, if it's a lie, if religion was a lie, I would want nothing to do with it. Yeah. Doesn't matter if it's a religion or not. I can't say it's lies because, because it makes claims that I can't verify or deny. Ultimately, you know, obviously, the, 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 you know, the, the spurious claims that some religions might make that are easily refutable or illogical. Or there are, lot, there are lots of evidence I for mean, religion. Serious, the the serious, universe, the serious, universe serious, itself, uh, is, is evidence of God's let's existence. Let's each of those could be matched up against a, a counterclaim from the other side that, that puts another story against it. Until you get to the point where, on both sides, you reach something that's. Um, you just have to accept. No, I don't. I don't. Let me say I don't, I don't agree with that. See, no, no, wait, wait a okay. let, 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 me, let me just add another please, point. Please add on. Which, again, being English, <laughs> I'm profoundly disturbed by. By what? I'm, I'm worried now. What are you profoundly disturbed by? I'm just profoundly disturbed being English. No, no, I was going to say that. that uh, how should I put this? Okay, I'll throw it out. Um, when people claim absolute certainty over, over things that are to do with the, you know, the, the way we organise ourselves, the structure of society, and all that sort of thing, where, where people claim certainty, I, I just hear the, you know, the alarm bells ringing. Do you do you often hear yes. bells ringing in your head? Is yes. this so you have something you have yes. regularly? Is it? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, so, so that's the point, and that. that that's, Part of being English, maybe, because we, uh, and, and any any country that's been through. I think uh, this is an, essential, wars, an essentialist yeah, the notion of being English is because oh, it, no, it's I, much I more internally that, diverse being English than just having that point of view. I agree, very internal. We don't need any more diversity. No, the, very diverse. If I may respond to that, the, the, all the diversity we need. The, there are many things we take. Cornwall, Newcastle. There are many things we take for granted that we don't Leicester. that don't we don't normally Bangor. require proof for. For example, yeah. the existence of a universe independent of our, ourselves. Uh, the, the solipsism is false, yeah. that the idea that it's just me and my brain, this idea you have when you're kind of 10 years old, you think, oh, it's just me and my mind, the, 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 no one else really exists, you can't really... That, we, 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 we operate on the assumption that is false. I operate on the assumption that you exist and you have a brain, etc. Um, uh, there's a whole range of, of uh, 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 assumptions we make about reality which we don't question and which uh, everyone, be the atheist, agnostic or the most you know, passionate believer, all accept is true. 
Um, and I, I would say, and, and I believe this is the common experience of mankind, the reality of God, his existence, is one of those facts of existence of our lives that we, that we don't normally question. It's axiomatic that we exist, the universe exists, God exists. It's not something that you have to arrive at by argument or provide evidence for, because I don't really have to provide evidence that he exists or there's existence of reality beyond my mind or that the universe exists. These, these are all self, is axiomatic, self-evident truths of our existence. And, and the existence of God is one of those truths. Now, the atheists don't go along with that. They say, oh, no, we're going to be skeptical. We're going to accept all these other things rationality, the existence of, of other minds, the fact that we're not uh, brains in a vat and we're just being manipulated by an evil genius. No, we'll world. accept that that's just a, philosoph a philosopher's game. But in fact, I am real. There's a whole range of assumptions that uh, atheists will not be skeptical about. Yeah. But when it comes to God, oh, oh, where's your evidence? Where's your evidence, sir? What's your argument, oh, sir? I'm thinking, hang on, your systematic skepticism here is yeah. very selective. Yeah. There's a whole lot of other bunch of stuff about reality that you will not apply. I don't mean you personally. You will not apply skepticism at all. Yeah. And I'm saying that the belief in God is properly a foundational belief, uh, along with all these others, properly foundational beliefs that, that uh, inform our epistemology and our metaphysics that do not require proof. They are self-evident facts. Alarm bells are no, that's like because you're an now. atheist. And back up but, but you see, no, no, you see, I, I, I really smell the, you know, the burning of, of pyres with marbles. Do you often get them. bells There's ringing no, and smells no, happening no, to you? Oh, this is to an interesting. Absolute truth about cosmology, yeah. which you are expressing there. I, I sorry, Paul, I, I do feel. You know the little alarm bells. Going. No, but you well, see, you I, I, I would, I would question why you do. And you're denying anybody no. else's right, if you like. To, no, I'm not. To... I'm saying that atheists, who are uh, happily a, dimi a, a diminishing number in the uh, in the world, by the way, atheism is declining. Uh, it's not increasing globally. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, the, the, I mean, it's not so, about numbers. I, I'm saying that, but, that atheism is the problem uh, because it is so out of sync with reality, so out of sync with those basic proper beliefs that we have pre pre-cognitively, by which we understand reality at all, and the atheists are highly selective in what it doubts. Because atheists don't doubt the existence of other minds. They don't doubt that we are just brains and about being manipulated. They don't doubt solip they don't doubt solipsism. They don't doubt ordinarily the existence of the universe. All these things which we cannot prove, if I was to ask you now to prove I exist uh, or the universe exists, right, how would you do that? How could you prove it exists? I mean really prove to me what evidence would you bring? And you can't just say, oh well there you are. Because, because how can you prove it's not a projection of uh, an evil genius who's manipulating your brains? How can you prove that? You can't. Right. How, how can you prove that solipsism is false? The idea that we're living in a matrix. It's a digital simulation. Exactly. So, 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 so what I'm saying is that so, these so are these are precognitive beliefs. I've seen you for five years. I feel like you're searching. I've seen you five really? years coming in. Oh, okay. so what, he's, what he's saying is that the only thing you can be a certain of is his uncertainty. Well, yeah. No, he questions anything. There are lots of things he takes for granted and will not question, but God he does question. But there, there's a many foundational beliefs that he accepts without question. But he, his scepticism is reserved for, for the existence of God. He's the same principles to come to truth about other things, but he doesn't apply those same Exactly. He's been selectively sceptical, uh, but he's not been consistent. If he was, if he was consistent, if he was really uh, questioning these fundamentals, he'd apply it across the board. And, he, and skeptics, skeptics don't. So uh, it, what we're dealing here with a, 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 a heart that, well, not his, the heart that's kind of twisted, and it's not really. Uh, and most people don't have this problem. Most people properly accept the existence of God and the existence of the world. All of these are base, properly basic beliefs that we don't question. But atheists selectively question one of those, and I'm saying you don't have grounds for doing that. I'm saying you don't have grounds. When he was going to entertain the Matrix theory, I mean, this is He's, problem, yeah, but well, Matrix is one of them. to entertain no. that yeah. as an idea, yeah. and I, potentially even a belief, I, you know, I respect the is, idea is, that is, is just shows that he doesn't have any certainty when it comes but to belief. No, at no, at all, at all, yeah. Yeah. I don't anyway. He's admitted to an agnostic, so he shifted a goalpost. Yeah, but atheists do that. When they challenge, they shift to agnostic. Have you noticed? I always notice that. I mean, do, even Dawkins would shift agnosticism under challenge briefly and then snap back into atheism. It's when they're challenged, they say, oh, well, I don't really know. But hang on, five minutes ago, you're saying you do know that God doesn't exist. That's your knowledge. 
But of course, they can't prove that. There's no evidence. And then you go back to what's looking. You say to an atheist, what's your evidence that God doesn't exist? Good job, though. You made him embarrassed to an atheist. Well, it wasn't the objective to make him feel embarrassed. It was your job, was it? No, I just wanted to point out that he was applying his scepticism inconsistently. There's an awful lot that he takes as, as real uh, and foundational without any evidence. But when it comes to God, he demands the evidence. But no, the existence of God is also a foundational belief. Like all these other things you believe that you don't require evidence for, which are fundamental to our existence. So why are you selectively applying your skepticism? I'm saying that it's unwarranted and that God's belief is properly foundational. And we don't need arguments for it. This is why many, many people who argue against God, I'm thinking that's not really the point because arguments can be argued against, as he said, yeah. but, but the existence of God is properly foundational and we don't need to argue for it. Yeah. And, and materialists who have a different philosophical paradigm are have a different prejudice and that's why they believe what they believe. But I won't give this dog, he's dog a team off still. Mm. He always manages to piss joke and I like that by him. Yes. He keeps the conversation that hard. Oh yeah, that's why I like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Is this just in the ether? I wonder if I can take this off now. <laughs>